Book Thirteen, Chapter Eleven. Which of us comprehendeth the Almighty Trinity, and yet which speaks not of it, if indeed it be it? Rare is the soul which, while it speaks of it, knows what it speaks of, and they contend and strive, yet without peace no man sees that vision. I would that men would consider these three that are in themselves. These three be indeed far other than the Trinity. I do but tell where they may practice themselves, and there prove and feel how far they be. Now the three I spake of are to be, to know, and to will. For I am, and know, and will. I am knowing, and willing, and I know myself to be, and to will, and I will to be, and to know. In these three, then, let him discern that can, how inseparable a life there is, yes, one life, one mind, and one essence, yea, lastly, how inseparable a distinction there is, and yet a distinction. Surely a man hath it before him, let him look into himself, and see, and tell me, but when he discovers and can say anything of these, let him not therefore think that he has found that which is above these unchangeable, which is unchangeably, and knows unchangeably, and wills unchangeably. And whether because these three there is in God also a trinity, or whether all three be in each, so that the three belong to each, or whether both ways at once wondrously simply and yet manifoldly itself abound unto itself within itself yet unbounded whereby it is and is known unto itself and sufficeth to itself unchangeably the self same by the abundant greatness of its unity who can readily conceive this who could any ways express it who would any way pronounce thereon rashly Chapter 12. Proceed in thy confession. Say to the Lord thy God, O my faith, holy, 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 O Lord my God, in thy name we have been baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. In thy name do we baptize, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, because among us also, in his Christ, did God make heaven and earth, namely the spiritual and carnal people of his church. Yea, and our earth, before it received the form of doctrine, was invisible and without form, and we were covered with the darkness of ignorance. For thou chasteneth man for iniquity, and thy judgments were like the great deep unto him. But because thy spirit was born above the waters, thy mercy forsook not our misery, and thou saidst, Let there be light, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent ye, let there be light. And because our soul was troubled within us, we remembered thee, O Lord, from the land of Jordan, and that mountain equal unto thyself, but little for our sakes. And our darkness displeased us, we turned unto thee, and there was light. And, behold, we were sometimes darkness, but now light in the Lord. Chapter 13 But as yet by faith and not by sight, for by hope we are saved, but hope that is seen is not hope. As yet doth deep call unto deep, but now in the voice of thy water spouts. And yet doth he that saith, I could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even he as yet doth not think himself to have apprehended and forgotten those things which are behind and reacheth forth to those which are before and groaneth being further burdened and his soul thirsteth after the living god as the heart after the water brooks and saith when shall i come desiring to be clothed upon with his house which is from heaven and calleth upon this lower deep saying be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And be not children in understanding, but in malice 
be ye children that in understanding ye may be perfect and o foolish galatians who hath bewitched you but now no longer in his own voice but in thine who sentest thy spirit from above through him who ascended up on high and set open the floodgates of his gifts that the force of his streams might make glad the city of god him doth this friend of the bridegroom sigh after having now the first fruits of the spirit laid upon him yet still growing within himself waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of his body to him he sighs a member of the bride for him he is jealous as being a friend of the bridegroom for him he is jealous not for himself because in the voice of thy waterspouts not in his own voice doth he call to that other deep over whom being jealous he feareth lest as the serpent beguiled eve through his subtlety so their minds should be corrupted from the purity that is in our bridegroom thy only son o oh, what a light of beauty will that be when we shall see him as he is and those tears be passed away which have been my meat day and night whilst they daily say unto me where now is thy god chapter fourteen behold i too say o my god where art thou see where thou art in thee i breathe a little when i pour out my soul by myself in the voice of joy and praise the sound of him that keeps holy day and yet again it is sad because it relapseth and becomes a deep or rather perceives itself still to be a deep until it speaks my faith which thou hast kindled to enlighten my feet in the night why art thou sad o my soul and why dost thou trouble me hope in the lord his word is a lantern unto thy feet hope and endure until the night the mother of the wicked until the wrath of the lord be overpassed whereof we also were once children who were sometimes darkness relics whereof we bear about us in our body dead because of sin until the day break and the shadows fly away hope thou in the lord in the morning i shall stand in thy presence and contemplate thee i shall for ever confess unto thee in the morning i shall stand in thy presence and shall see the health of my countenance my god who also shall quicken our mortal bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in us because he hath in mercy been born over our inner darkness and floating deep from whom we have in this pilgrimage received an earnest that we should now be light whilst we are saved by hope and are the children of light and the children of the day not the children of the night nor of the darkness which yet sometimes we were betwixt whom and us in this uncertainty of human knowledge thou only dividest thou who provest our hearts and callest the light day and the darkness night for who discerneth us but thou and what have we that we have not received of thee out of the same lump vessels unto honour whereof others also were made unto dishonour chapter fifteen or who except thou our god made for us that firmament of authority over us in thy divine scripture as it is said for heaven shall be folded up like a scroll and now it is stretched over us like a skin for thy divine scripture is of more eminent authority since those mortals by whom thou dispensest it unto us underwent mortality and thou knowest lord thou knowest how thou with skins didst clothe man when they by sin became mortal whence thou hast like a skin stretched out the firmament of thy book that is thy harmonizing words which by the ministry of mortal men thou spreadest over us for by their very death was that solid firmament of authority in thy discourses set forth by them more eminently extended over all that be under it which whilst they lived here was not so eminently extended thou hadst not as yet spread abroad the heavens like a skin thou hadst not as yet enlarged in all directions the glory of their deaths let us look o lord upon the heavens 
the work of thy fingers clear from our eyes that cloud which thou hast spread under them there is thy testimony which giveth wisdom unto the little ones perfect o my god thy praise out of the mouth of babes and sucklings for we know no other books which so destroy pride which so destroy the enemy and the defender who resisteth thy reconciliation by defending his own sins i know not lord i know not any other such pure words which so persuade me to confess and make my neck pliant to thy yoke and invite me to serve thee for naught let me understand them good father grant this to me who am placed under them because for those placed under them hast thou established them other waters there be above this firmament i believe immortal and separated from earthly corruption let them praise thy name let them praise thee the super celestial people thine angels who have no need to gaze up at this firmament or by reading to know of thy word for they always behold thy face and there read without any syllables in time what willeth thy eternal will they read they choose they love they are ever reading and that never passes away which they read for by choosing and by loving they read the very unchangeableness of thy counsel their book is never closed nor their scroll folded up seeing thou thyself art this to them and art eternally because thou hast ordained them above this firmament which thou hast firmly settled over the infirmity of the lower people where they might gaze up and learn thy mercy announcing in time thee who madest times for thy mercy o lord is in the heavens and thy truth reacheth unto the clouds the clouds pass away but the heaven abideth the preachers of thy word pass out of this life into another but thy scripture is spread abroad over the people even unto the end of the world yet heaven and earth also shall pass away but thy words shall not pass away because the scroll shall be rolled together and the grass over which it was spread shall with the godliness of it pass away but thy word remaineth for ever which now appeareth unto us under the dark image of the clouds and through the glass of the heavens not as it is because we also though the well-beloved of thy son yet it hath not yet appeared what we shall be he looketh through the lattice of our flesh and he spake us tenderly and kindled us and we ran after his odours but when he shall appear then shall we be like him for we shall see him as he is as he is lord will our sight be chapter sixteen for altogether as thou art thou only knowest who art unchangeably and knowest unchangeably and willest unchangeably and thy essence knoweth and willeth unchangeably and thy knowledge is and willeth unchangeably and thy will is and knoweth unchangeably nor seemeth it right in thine eyes that as the unchangeable light knoweth itself so it should be known by the thing enlightened and changeable therefore is my soul like a land where no water is because it cannot of itself enlighten itself so can it not of itself satisfy itself for so is the fountain of life with thee like as in thy light we shall see light chapter seventeen who gathered the embittered together in one society for they have all one end a temporal and earthly felicity for attaining whereof they do all things though they waver up and down with an innumerable variety of cares who lord but thou saidst let the waters be gathered together in one place and let the dry land appear which thirsteth after thee for the sea also is thine and thou hast made it and thy hands prepared the dry land nor is the bitterness of men's wills but the gathering together of the waters called sea for thou restraineth the wicked desires of men's souls and settest them their bounds how far they may be allowed to pass that their waves may break one against another and thus makest thou it a sea 
by the order of thy dominion over all things but the souls that thirst after thee and that appear before thee being by other bounds divided from the society of the sea thou waterest by a sweet spring that the earth may bring forth her fruit and thou lord god so commanding our souls may bud forth works of mercy according to their kind loving our neighbour in the relief of his bodily necessities having seed in itself according to its likeness when from the feeling of our infirmity we compassionate so as to relieve the needy helping them as we would be helped if we were like in need not only in things easy as in herb yielding seed but also in the protection of our assistance with our best strength like the tree yielding fruit that is well doing in rescuing him that suffers wrong from the hand of the powerful and giving him the shelter of protection by the mighty strength of just judgment chapter eighteen so lord so i beseech thee let there spring up as thou doest as thou givest cheerfulness and ability let truth spring out of the earth and righteousness look down from heaven and let there be lights in the firmament let us break our bread to the hungry and bring the houseless poor to our house let us clothe the naked and despise not those of our own flesh which fruits having sprung out of the earth see it is good and let our temporary light break forth and ourselves from this lower fruitfulness of action arriving at the delightfulness of contemplation obtaining the word of life above appear like lights in the world cleaving to the firmament of thy scripture for there thou instructest us to divide between the things intellectual and the things of sense as betwixt the day and the night or between souls given either to things intellectual or things of sense so that now not thou only in the secret of thy judgments as before the firmament was made divide us between the light and the darkness but thy spiritual children also set and ranked in the same firmament now that thy grace is laid open throughout the world may give light upon the earth and divide betwixt the day and the night and be for signs of times that old things are passed away and behold all things are become new and that our salvation is nearer than when we believed and that the night is far spent and the day is at hand and that thou wilt crown thy year with blessing sending the labourers of thy goodness into thy harvest in sowing whereof others have laboured sending also into another field whose harvest shall be in the end thus grantest thou the prayers of him that asketh and blesseth the years of the just but thou art the same and in thy years which fail not thou preparest a garner for our passing years for thou by an eternal counsel dost in their proper seasons bestow heavenly blessings upon the earth for to one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom as it were the greater light for their sakes who are delighted with the light of perspicuous truth as it were for the rule of the day to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit as it were the lesser light to another faith to another the gift of healing to another the working of miracles to another prophecy to another discerning of spirits to another diverse kinds of tongues and all these as it were stars for all these worketh the one and the selfsame spirit dividing to every man his own as he will and causing stars to appear manifestly to profit with all but the word of knowledge wherein are contained all sacraments which are varied in their seasons as it were the moon and those other notices of gifts which are reckoned up in order as it were the stars inasmuch as they come short of that brightness of wisdom which gladdens the forementioned day are only for the rule of the night for they are necessary to such as that thy most prudent servant could not speak unto as unto spiritual but as unto carnal even he who speaketh wisdom among those that are perfect but the natural man as it were a babe in christ and fed on milk until he be strengthened for solid meat and his eye be enabled to behold the sun 
let him not dwell in a night forsaken of all light but be content with the light of the moon and the stars so dost thou speak to us our all-wise god in thy book thy firmament that we may discern all things in an admirable contemplation though yet as in signs and in times and in days and in years chapter nineteen but first wash you be clean put away evil from your souls and from before mine eyes that the dry land may appear learn to do good judge the fatherless plead for the widow that the earth may bring forth the green herb for meat and the tree for bearing fruit and come let us reason together saith the lord that there may be lights in the firmament of the heaven and they may shine upon the earth that rich man asked of the good master what he should do to attain eternal life let the good master tell him whom he thought no more than man but he is good because he is god let him tell him if he would enter into life he must keep the commandments let him put away from him the bitterness of malice and wickedness not kill not commit adultery not steal not bear false witness that the dry land may appear and bring forth the honouring of father and mother and the love of our neighbour and these saith he have i kept whence then so many thorns if the earth be fruitful go root up the spreading thickets of covetousness sell that thou hast and be filled with fruit by giving to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and follow the lord if thou wilt be perfect associated with them among whom he speaketh wisdom who knoweth what to distribute to the day and to the night that thou also mayest know it and for thee there may be lights in the firmament of heaven which will not be unless thy heart be there nor will that either be unless there thy treasure be as thou hast heard of the good master but that barren earth was grieved and the thorns choked the word but you chosen generation you weak things of the world who have forsaken all that ye may follow the lord go after him and confound the mighty go after him ye beautiful feet and shine ye in the firmament that the heavens may declare his glory dividing between the light of the perfect though not as the angels and the darkness of the little ones though not despised shine over the earth and let the day lightened by the sun utter unto day speech of wisdom and night shining with the moon show unto night the word of knowledge the moon and stars shine for the night yet doth not the night obscure them seeing they give it light in its degree for behold god saying as it were let there be lights in the firmament of heaven there came suddenly a sound from heaven as it had been the rushing of a mighty wind and there appeared cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them and there were made lights in the firmament of heaven having the word of life run ye to and fro everywhere ye holy fires ye beauteous fires for ye are the light of the world nor are ye put under a bushel he whom you cleave unto is exalted and hath exalted you run ye to and fro and be known unto all nations chapter twenty let the sea also conceive and bring forth your works and let the waters bring forth the moving creature that hath life for ye separating the precious from the vile are made the mouth of god by whom he saith let the waters bring forth not the living creature which the earth brings forth but the moving creature having life and all the fowls that fly above the earth for thy sacraments o god by the ministry of thy holy ones have moved amid the waves of temptations of the world to hallow the gentiles in thy name in thy baptism and amid these things many great wonders were wrought as it were great whales and the voice of thy messengers flying above the earth in the open firmament of thy book that being set over them as their authority under which they were to fly whithersoever they went for there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard seeing their sound is gone through all the earth 
and their words to the end of the world, because thou, Lord, multipliest them by blessing. Speak I untruly, or do I mingle and confound, and not distinguish between the lucid knowledge of these things in the firmament of heaven, and the material works in the wavy sea, and under the firmament of heaven? For of these things whereof the knowledge is substantial and defined, without any increase by generation, as it were lights of wisdom and knowledge, yet even of them the material operations are many and diverse, and one thing growing out of another, they are multiplied by thy blessing, O God, who hast refreshed the fastidiousness of mortal senses, so that one thing in the understanding of our mind may, by the motions of the body, be many ways set out and expressed. These sacraments have the waters brought forth, but in thy word the necessities of the people estranged from the eternity of thy truth have brought them forth, but in thy gospel. Because the waters themselves cast them forth, the diseased bitterness whereof was the cause why they were sent forth in thy word. Now are all things fair that thou hast made, but behold, thyself art unutterably fair that madest all. From whom had not Adam fallen, the brackishness of the sea had never flowed out of him, that is, the human race so profoundly curious and tempestuously swelling and relentlessly tumbling up and down, and then had there been no need of thy dispensers to work in many waters, after a corporal and sensible manner, mysterious doings and sayings. For such these moving and flying creatures now seem to me to mean, whereby people being initiated and consecrated by corporal sacraments should not further profit, unless their soul had a spiritual life, and unless after the word of admission it looked forwards to perfection. End of Book 13, Chapter 20